so paint the picture. We so we see the celebration on the field with the slip and slide. What's that post game locker room like? I mean, definitely a lot of juice, a lot of energy. Um, just really being able to experience that with this new regime, with this new team, new staff. I mean, it's definitely our first. I mean, the preseason we won all of those games, but to really have something that really counts, um, something we've been looking forward to. I mean, we all know that what that San Francisco organization is all about. They won a lot of games. They were in the NFC Championship last year. So just to start off with a big-time win like that definitely feels good for everything that we're trying to build moving forward. Yeah, and uh, did you miss Club Dub? Yeah, I, mean, I thought we still had it. I thought that was a Bears organization thing. I didn't know that was something that the old staff did, but I'm definitely going to try to work some something out to get Club Dub back because we didn't have no music. We didn't have the juice. We didn't cut the lights off and with the strobe lights. We got to bring all that back. Oh, that's hilarious. So did you go in there ready to dance and then you're <laughs> yeah, like disappointed? I'm, I'm I was talking to the cameras, talking about Club Dub, telling everybody 21 and older. And then I go in there and it's them collecting the uniforms and the shoulder pads. There wasn't no music. Lights were still on. So, I mean, I, I was a little lost. I thought everybody had Club Dub. <laughs> I'm going to definitely go back and talk to Coach Matt in the leadership meeting and tell him we need some Club Dub back in there for sure. Absolutely, because because we played it. Coach Fluce after the game or Coach Matt, he was just like, he was just like, yeah, just be normal. Just, just be normal. Yeah, yeah just, no, 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 no. We got to bring the juice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, all right so this close is the, the club. This is another thing we were. Yeah, they shut the club down. <laughs> <laughs> they shut it down. Uh, now, we, we, were, we were a little worried about you, Jalen. Uh, you weren't targeted once. They passed the ball 26 times, didn't throw you away one time. Were you bored out there at any point? No, no, no. I definitely couldn't be bored. I didn't want to get caught lacking really in any in any situation I mean they there was almost one with the offensive PI and then even the one with Eddie Jackson um using him as my help knowing that I had him so it's playing outside leverage trusting him that he would come and make a play and he did so I mean there really was some times but I mean the offensive PI got called back and right. then the interception of course doesn't go to me so I mean I would count it as two targets but I mean at the end of the day the things can win in my favor for that day for sure it's a sign of respect, isn't it? I mean, so fine, call it call it two targets, but that that has to be a tremendous sign of respect for what the league thinks of you. Oh no, hundred percent. I mean, it feels good. I mean, they have guys too. I mean, Debo, Sam, Brennan, I youth, they're all good players, very good players at that. So I mean, just really being having that limited action, I feel like it speaks volumes to my game and kind of just what my God given abilities are and the hard work that I've put in. But I mean, there's still a lot more to go, 100%. Yeah, but Jalen, you know, you know how good you are. And as a cornerback, I mean, we have all this history of like going back to Deion Sanders and decades before that of like cornerbacks talking a big game. Jalen Ramsey talks kind of a large game. Like this is, oh, yeah, for sure. This is a thing. Is it, is it necessary to have that ego, to have that belief in oneself to do the job you have to do? Oh, 100%. Uh, I think guys in corners um, really just express it differently. I mean, but I feel like being a corner, you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe that you're a dog. You got to believe that you're the best on the field. I feel like we're already at a disadvantage playing backwards, having to react, having to cover some really, really good guys in this league. Um, so, I mean, just having that mentality, that mindset, I feel like that's just something that I've always had as a kid. And then definitely coming into the NFL and having success, it just continues to breed that. Um, it really just makes you more hungry for the moment, make you more hungry for matchups and different things like that. So, I mean, for me, it's nothing that I'm not I'm not used to doing. Um, it's something I look forward to doing, going against big matchups. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I know who I am. I know what I've done, and I know what I can continue to do. Um, so, I mean, there's no there's no lack of confidence in my game at all. You a trash talker on the field? No, nah, I don't talk too much, really, until somebody says anything to me. But too many, not too many times people trash talk to me. There's only been one time. Oh, what was that? It was DeAndre Hopkins last year. Hmm. It was, <laughs> he, he, he was a talker. He started off talking crazy a little bit, and then kind of as the game gone, went on, it wasn't too much after that. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to go scrambling for the stats. You probably know him, though. Oh, no, it was <laughs> – I'm not going to say too much of what happened on the very first one, um, <laughs> but I know on the first pass attempt he had, it was a touchdown. Like I said, I'm not going to go into details about – the the mishaps on that play but okay at the end of the day he didn't have anything after that so i mean i definitely feel confident with my performance in that game so uh we looked it up so you don't have to mention it uh two targets 
32 yards and a touchdown for DeAndre Hopkins. So we got the touchdown on that. Whatever happened on that play, there we were some get, mishaps. We don't have to get into don't the details. Don't call out anybody. And then only just yeah, one. Nah, I, ain't, I ain't that type of guy. <laughs> yeah, we, we understand, but That's only fair. one more catch for Hopkins the rest of the game. That's yeah, uh, nah, nah, that wasn't that wasn't on me. That I was his own. <laughs> that, that was him going across to the other side of the field. <laughs> So, oh. I mean, it, it's all good, though. Hey, speaking of going across the other side, are, 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 are you going to be, you know, doing that this year? Are you going to be that guy, that number one corner for a number one wideout, following people around? The number one corner part, 100%. Uh, now, going and following the other with number one wide receivers, I mean, that's definitely, I would say, not up to me. Um, it's something that clearly I've done before, cause something I did last year and excelled at. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a new staff, new things going on, new things that they want to do and get accomplished. So, I mean, if that's in the game plan for them, then I'm sure they'll make that happen. But if not, then, I mean, we're just going to continue to play our ball on defense and go from there. How do you think your teammates played yesterday? Kyler in the nickel, you know? Oh, I think he did really good. Um, really, I feel like one one catch he did have was just kind of a mental mishap. But I feel like physically he was out there moving as if he belongs. I mean, that definitely is uplifting. He's not, he's not afraid of contact. He's not afraid of the moment. Um, he's definitely very attacking, a good a good tackler as well. So, I mean, I'm definitely confident in where he's building and what he's growing into. All right, so Jalen, the first turnover of the season is like the favorite play of all Bears fans. You know this. The, the, oh, the peanut punch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the peanut punch. And you wear 33. So what's your relationship with him? How much have you studied him? I haven't studied him really too much outside of the peanut punch. I mean, he's definitely a... a a master at it um and it's crazy to really because at first i used to think like how do you even punch the ball out like how do you just <laughs> do that and take the ball away from people like that and then kind of towards the end of last year i kind of started trying it a little bit and then i got one out against detroit yep um but i mean now i mean since the coaches really have pushed us to try to create turnovers and punching the ball out is one of them i mean every time in practice you approach the ball they want us to punch the ball out so, i mean really just turning that into a habit um, really is, is something different for me, but I'm definitely enjoying it and obviously reaping the benefits of that practice. Um, but it just gives you more opportunity to try to create turnovers and um, get that ball out as much as possible. Did you pick his brain on how to do it when he spoke to the team? No, nah, I wouldn't say pick. I mean, it's really like something that you just got to practice. Really, you've got to just get used to doing it. Um, and even, even then, I feel like there still is some fine art. You got to kind of be able to find certain parts of the ball, no knowing when to do it, when the offense isn't truly expecting it, and kind of being smart with it as, as well, knowing the situation and when to do it um, and things like that. But, I mean, it's really once you get used to punching, getting used to kind of seeing the ball in a certain way, then it definitely makes it a lot easier. And now you guys this week, you know, you know how it is, right? Your 24-hour rule. It's Sunday oh, night yeah. football. It's Bears-Packers. You got 12 this week. The guy who said he owned you. Oh. uh that piss you off? Like you, you ready? You know, they they lost yesterday. You ready for this Sunday night? Yeah, but we gotta we gotta backtrack. I can't. I mean, I don't. He said he owned. I would say the Bears organization. I can't let him just say that he owned me individually. Like, <laughs> as a man, as a man, I can't. I can't accept. That. Understood. I did, not, I did not mean that he said he owned <laughs> no, no, Jalen no, no, Johnson. Yeah, just for my own self, I had to clear that up. He I, said it to the fans. He, yeah, he, he yeah, said okay, it to the fans. He said it to all of us, <laughs> the, man. The, the city yeah, of Chicago we were Bears mad. fans. It was not owning Jalen Johnson. I apologize <laughs> on how no, I delivered no, no, that quote. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I still no, own you. I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited for the matchup. Um, and it's really like, I mean, for me, I, it, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not excited for the game, for the matchup, but definitely my my long rival isn't there anymore. So, I mean, I don't have that juice and excitement of going against Devontae um, Adams, just who he is to the game and him being that wide receiver and just having that big matchup um, with yeah. something that is – Un undescribable really as a feeling and what preparation it took to go into that. But I mean, definitely having to adjust and see what the new adjustments are that they're making with their new wide receiver and core um, and who their guys are and what they like to do. I mean, clearly they're, they're not him. Um, so they're going to have to change some things up. So I'm just curious to see what those things are and start watching that film tonight. Yeah, I can tell you uh, after watching some of that game, Christian Watson is definitely not Devontae Adams, Jalen. Yeah, no, no, no. Devontae wasn't Devontae <laughs> at, that, at his first year. So, I mean, it definitely is going to take some time, and especially playing with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's not just a regular system quarterback. you got to really be in tune and on the same page with him um, for, I feel like, their offense to really go how it's going to go and being able to capitalize on 
just throws. I mean, he's going to put some his throws in the in the right spot on some difficult windows, and uh, you got to really be able to play with him. And I feel like Devonte grew into that role. He wasn't always that when he first got there, um, but as he grew and as he got closer to Aaron Rodgers, I feel like they started building some really really special. 